had many practice opportunities uh, since you know the Baylor game, but how have they kind of responded? At least what you've seen since then. I I don't know. I went recruiting and they were off yesterday, so you know it's, it's part of your normal routine. But you know you text with them, call some of the guys, and and talk with them. And um, I, I I mean I they know uh, this is a, you know it's a huge opportunity, a great game. You know I, you know you're on CBS against number one team, and they're they're fighting for a. A Big 12 championship, and we've had a, uh, our struggles, and you know the speed. It's not going to, ch- you know, totally change the season, but it would be sure nice if you could find a way to play at a high level and beat them. It is not going to be easy. They're very, very good. Um, you know, both those teams, Baylor and, and West and uh, Kansas, uh, great guard play, toughness, defense. Uh, it's funny the, you know, they're just playing small ball basically, and uh, you know, but they. That, and and you got one of the best big guys, if not the best big guy in the country, inside. Yeah, as has been on a real tear lately. What makes him such a tough matchup, both offensively and defensively? I think it's the four guards. It, they just spread you out, and and then he gets the roam, and they're so good at getting downhill, and you got to help. And and now they lob it to him, or they can you know throw it over the top, and. You know, you got two point guards, and you know Dotson's one of the best, and then really Garrett's a, a a point forward, whatever you want to call him, and both of them know how to read and make the plays to him. So, you know, if you very few teams have more than one good defender, so that puts you in a bind, and that allows him to kind of roam. You know, this first season probably in a while where he's just stayed healthy, and and he, you know I think he's in great shape. Confident, playing like an older guy should. You know that's that. You know you got to give him credit. Uh, you know they. You know who who a lot of who wins in college basketball. A lot of times older guys, and and they've been through it. They've been through the wars. They understand the preparation. Um, and he he's just playing. He you know he runs the court better. He does so much more. Seems like he just better shape all that stuff than he's been in the past. You have to talk to the guys about. I mean, it, we talked obviously talked a lot about it last after it happened, and you know we went through it. Uh, you, you know, we'll definitely remind them. You know that, you know we're here to play basketball, and we gotta we gotta act right. Like I said after game, act act right, play the game with class. You know, win or lose, and that that's the biggest thing. So, you know, it, any little incident we've had since then, you know, rebound tussle or whatever, we've we've always brought it up to them. Hey, we don't need problems now. We we gotta worry about ourselves and our game and getting better and we don't need anything else. So it was it was, you know, not great for Kansas, not good for K State, not good for college basketball and, you know, but we move forward to get a, a you know a chance to, you know, play in a special environment on Saturday against a really good team on national T V and what more can you ask for? I I I don't you know we'll see we'll see if he can get in practice here um, you know I'm I'm not gonna I can't push him to do what he you know he's got to feel right and it's a shame you know because we miss him he was uh, very very solid for us he wasn't spectacular but he was solid and you know sometimes it's the best teams you know where you got guys that know their roles and figure it out and and he was very very good defensively that really helped us. Um, you know when he was in there, that because he could switch things, he he seemed to read it, didn't overdo it. You know, I, I kind of tease with you guys what it less is more. I think that was probably his, you know, key to success. But uh, you know, it, we'll we'll see what see how practice goes in the next couple of days. Nigel Shad got a little bit of time at the end of the Baylor game. Yeah. What keeps him off the floor? Well, he just you know he just was so far behind. It just. You miss basically a year and a half, two years, whatever. He's just been hurt all the time. Um, you know, when you're not here in practicing in October, November, and beginning of December, it's tough all of a sudden to, you know, to know the plays, to know the coverages, all that stuff. You know, physically he can do some things. And, you know, we've always said even the last time we were there, if we get in foul trouble with big guys, and he, you know, the thing he does have is a big body. You know, you might have to you might have to use him. So, uh, great. No, he's a good young man. He wants to do well. He's he's put in a lot of extra time trying to get back, but it's just tough. I mean, you don't practice. 
you know, Monday was was Sunday. You come back after the game. You don't get you don't really get the practice. You know, you just you've played and you flew back. You know, you played here and then you you know. But Monday's a prep. Tuesday you play. You're off today. Today we get a little bit of real practice. But you got your guys that have played, and and so it's just it's just been tough for him to catch up. Um, you know, I, I, I think Garrett, and I don't know if he gets underlooked, but he's just so smart and knows how to play and plays off of Dotson and Azubuki. Um, uh, you know, they know their roles, they, you know, small ball, uh, you know, this, they've been able to, uh, rebound with that, you know, part of it, Azubuki's getting what, 20 rebounds, 18 rebounds, things like that. Um, uh, they're just efficient, just very tough, efficient. And you know, I I think people have talked about their defense, but they're since we played them beginning of January or early in January in this last uh, you know seven eight weeks, they've definitely gotten better defensively, and that's that's why they're up at the top and they've been on a nice win streak. For seniors like you know Mac and X, how how big or how important do you perceive this opportunity to be? For them? Well, I hope it is. I hope they you know take it as a special moment. You know, you can. Could be, but it, it, again, it's not going to be easy, and we're going to have to sustain. You know, you it, you you know, you get adrenaline going. You maybe you make a couple shots, but they're going to keep playing. That's why they're good, and um, you know, we'll 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 see. It's uh, you know, it should be fun. Uh, I hope we're, I hope we we play well. That's that's what I want. Play hard, play well, compete, and and give ourselves a chance. Maybe some balls will bounce our way. Oh, I think it's always a factor, but they're tough. They just went to Baylor. It's Baylor's probably the biggest crowd of the year, and they just grinded it out and found a way to win. They, you know, they went to West Virginia before that. Um, you know, they they just uh, tough-minded team. And you know, we if you we're watching just as a staff now, in second half we make a 12-2 run, and then all of a sudden Dotson just comes down, and goes do do do, poop, layup. You know, it's it's pretty nice. To not call timeout and give it to your guy, and he goes do 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 video game layup, and so you know it's just that's why they're good. They get you know when you build a team, uh, you know uh, all the old guys used to say, do you need the aircraft carrier or the you know the point guard, and and you know they they're just very very fortunate to have two of the best at both those positions, and they've been able to plug in the other guys. Talking about small ball a lot. Do you ever, like, as a coach or any coach, consider changing how you recruit to recruit that type of team, or do you try to stick with what you believe has been? Well, you you know, it, it. If you go back, my Illinois team, our our five was a four, our four was a, a three, and we played three point guards. So, you know, and that was quite a while ago um, that we did that. So, you know, it's it's you know a little bit of modern basketball. Obviously, Warriors have done it and. You know, I, I think the biggest thing that, you know, and, and our guards, some are young and, you know, some all the other issues we've had this year. But, you know, it, it really tell it reminds you how important being able to handle the ball, pass the ball, and make plays is. And the more guys you have that, the easier it is for you as a coach. You've called it being in the flow with your offense, getting rolling. What's, what's been the source of your shortcomings? I think the uh, you know obviously when you don't make shots that that doesn't help and you don't make free throws and layups you know those things are pretty obvious but you know being able to make the next pass and and then somebody makes a play that creates a better shot for somebody else I think that's been the biggest thing um, you know and it just seems like each guy you know they're again I don't think it's selfish they just try to make plays some you know we want to win I'm going to go make a play well that's not how you win the game you you know you you drive it you kick you know what does Baylor do they just probe you probe you probe you until somebody gets a shot and and you know you got to make those shots and you know we I've started showing not just makes to our guys but good offensive possessions because there's you have good possessions you don't make the shot and and you know that's important uh, so just, I just think it, you know, it just, it's, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened, but, you know, 
you, you lost some close games. You lost a little confidence. You got young, you know, you knew as a team, and it just hasn't unfolded. It's very, very sad, disappointing. And, you know, I wish I could go back, but you can't. It's not a video game. You obviously do a lot of self-scouting in, in the offseason. What does it take to implement new versions of your offense or new areas just kind of entirely? Well, I mean, it's – it's you got to every year you got to figure out what players you have and then what they can do their strengths and then now can you implement you know there were lots so many things we ran with Dean we can't run now it it just it changes so you had to figure something else out so uh, I think our biggest or thing is we have not had been a, had a continuity offense a offense a free flowing basketball offense we have set plays and. I think I said it to you guys before. It's the old Coach Knight's thing. Do you want two good plays or two good players at the end of the year? Plays they'll take away, and people scout it. And you know, and even within games, you can run a play, get it. The next time you run it, they adjust. Teams are smart, and and especially in this league, the defense is so good. But you know, two two good players make plays, and when you have three good players or four, then it's really easy. And I'm a really good coach, and I cheer. And you would say you reinvent yourself pretty much every year? Oh, I don't you know, hope not totally, but, yeah, you have to. You know, if you don't, Coach Katie, my my old boss told me one time, you want to stay in the business a long time, you better be flexible. Flexible with young men and their changes and how society changes, but also the game changes, your players change, and you can't do the same thing every year. I imagine you don't see maybe two guard and wing as terribly different positions, but as Self Miguel Duvall, do you still see him as kind of a Sager Steve wing type, or is he? He's probably when I he's he's been more probably almost a more like Garrett a point three, oh, yeah. yeah he, and he handles the ball for them all the time, so it gives you another ball handle. It's definitely something that we've talked about. That not only you know it's one thing to be able to dribble, but create and make a pass, and that's why Baylor's so good, and that's why Kansas is so good. You know they have a more than one guys and it, it really Baylor has three or four that can all do that. Is that something that maybe Luke Kazuki can do a little better than I mean at least something that me would have judged early on watching him is he more of a secondary third type creator? I, I think there's you know he's obviously his strength is his shooting but uh, you know you you hope that he can at least put you know shot like put it on the floor make the right right play so you know that and it, I think Dej one will be fine over time he just he he does the right thing, but then he gets in there and, and gets bumped and falls down a lot, and that's you know and that's that'll be strength. And, Has he lost weight even over the season. I you know he's really tried. We've really talked to him about eating right, all that stuff, and and he knows. And and you know I called him last night and talked to him, and uh, and I even talked to him about last year. I said because at the end of the year last year, and he said you know he plays so hard, he cares so much, and I said but you can't live on chips. Chips alone do not do it, you know. So I'm sorry. It's just a fact of life, you know. I love Doritos as much as anybody, but you got to have something else in the tank. So it's just, you know, and that's what he's like. One of the first road trips, we went to a really nice steakhouse in Vegas, and he goes, "Why do we got to eat this?" And it was a fillet, the best fillet you might ever have. So I got to get over there. <laughs>